Welcome to CG Dive. In this quick video, I'll show you a really simple yet powerful technique to convert Blender's bendy bones to normal bones. Bendy bones are very powerful, but they are a feature that only works in Blender. If you try to export a rig that features bendy bones to a game engine or another 3D app, the effect of bendy bones will be lost. And so there is a way to convert bendy bones to normal bones. For some reason, this technique is not very well known. I learned it from this uh, thread on right-click select. I'll link to it, but I haven't seen this technique explained or shown anywhere else. So I hope you know what uh, Blender's bendy bones are. If you don't, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to them. And if you're just interested in the actual conversion technique, just skip ahead to around the middle of the video. If you pay attention to the chapters on YouTube, then you should be able to find it easily. So here I have a cylinder with a bunch of subdivisions. I'm going to add a new bone, single bone. Go to edit mode, make the bone as long as the cylinder, and then go back to object mode, select my cylinder, shift select the bone, control P and parent with automatic weights. And now if I go to the bone and switch to pose mode and move this bone, You'll see that it simply moves this um, cylinder, which makes sense, no surprises. However, if I go to the armature tab, I'm going to switch display as to B bones. And you'll see that the appearance of my bone changed a little bit, but still, if I rotate it or move it around, it will do the exact same thing. However, if I go to the bone tab, bendy bones, and I increase the segments, you'll see that my bone seems to get subdivided into sub-bones. So let's change segments to 5 and then try to play with these curve in and out settings. And my cylinder starts to deform like magic. And the more segments that I give it, the smoother the curvature will be. Now, if I go back to the armature tab and switch display type as octahedral, you'll see that I still have only one bone. And that tells us two things. One, bendy bone segments do not really subdivide this bone. I guess it kind of does, but only internally. It is not the same as going to edit mode and right-clicking and choosing subdivide. So I'm going to undo this and go back to pose mode. And the second thing that should become clear is that these display types are just that, just display. So even though we cannot see the bendy bones segments, we can see that the object is deformed, which means that the bendy bones are doing their thing behind the scenes. And so if you want to see the bendy bones, you have to switch to either B bone or wire. All other display types will only display a single bone. So I'll switch back to bendy bones. And here is a small tip for you. In B-Bone display mode, if I select this bone and press Ctrl, Alt and S, I can make this bone thicker or thinner. And this is entirely for display purposes. It will not change the actual functionality of this bone. And where this is useful, if I go to edit mode and create a new bone, and I'm going to move this new bone to the side and then Shift D, duplicate it and right click to cancel this movement. So now I have two overlapping bones. If I press Ctrl, Alt and S, I'm going to make this um, selected bone thicker and that will make it possible to see the uh, bone underneath it. And if I switch to octahedral, you'll see that these bones are just completely overlapping and it is impossible to say that there are two bones that are overlapping, but in bendy bones mode, you can see them. Okay, these are the basics of bendy bones. Now, obviously, if I go to pose mode, I have these curvature options that I can tweak to change the curvature of the bendy bone. But of course, doing it this way is not intuitive. So instead, we can create controls for these bendy bones. And creating these bendy bone controls is an art form in and of itself. But I'm going to show you a very simple yet intuitive and powerful b-bone setup. If you search for bendy bone tutorials, you'll find a bunch of tutorials that show this exact setup in detail. So let's do this really quickly here. I'm going to start over from my cylinder. I'm going to create a new bone, single bone, switch to wireframe view, go to edit mode for my bone, 
make it really small at the base of this um, object. And I'm going to I'm going to extrude another bone from it straight up and make it as long as the cylinder and then extrude another bone. I'm going to name my bones. The first one will be start. The second one, bendy bone. And the last one, I'm going to call end. Now let's switch the display type to bendy bones. And in bone tab, give this main bone some segments. Let's say six. And another thing that I'm going to do right away is I'm going to keep the deform option for the middle bone, for the long bone. And I'm going to turn it off for the start and for the end bone. So only my middle bone is a deforming bone and these other two will be controls. Okay, so now with the end bone selected, I'm going to press Alt P and clear parent. And then I'm going to go to pose mode, select the end bone, shift select the bendy bone, press Control shift C and choose stretch two. And then with the bendy bone selected, I'm going to switch the start handle and end handle to absolute. And for the start handle, I'm going to choose the start bone and for the end handle, the end bone. And now with this setup, I can kind of move this uh, end bone and that will deform the bendy bone. And I can also rotate it to intuitively control the curvature. So I'm going to press Alt G, Alt R to bring it back to the default position. And I can do the same thing with the start bone. So Control Z, and now in object mode, I'm going to select my cylinder, shift select the armature, Control P with automatic weights. And now actually I'm going to select the start and end bone, Control Alt and S to scale them up so that they look more like controls. And now if I try to manipulate them, I'm going to be also deforming this um, uh, cylinder. Okay, so now we have the bendy bone set up. I'm going to select all bones and clear transforms. And now how do we do this conversion that I talked about from bendy bones to normal bones? It is fairly simple. I'm going to go to edit mode. And now I want another bone that is exactly as long as this uh, bendy bone that I have. So I'm simply going to duplicate it. Shift D and right click to cancel the movement. Press Control Alt S to scale this bone and distinguish it. And I'm going to get rid of all of its um, bendy bone segments. I'll set them to one. And now in pose mode, this uh, bone still has the stretch to constraint, which I don't need. I'm going to get rid of it. And also in edit mode, I'm going to press Alt P and clear its parent. So let's hide the cylinder. So here I have this bone that is exactly as long as my uh, bendy bone. Next, I want to actually subdivide it into as many bones as I want. So to keep things simple, I'm going to subdivide it into six bones, just like the segments that I have for my bendy bones. So with this new bone selected, I'm going to right click subdivide. And in here, I'm going to give it number of cuts five. By giving it five cuts, I created six subdivided bones. Uh, you can count them if you don't believe me. As I have them selected, I also want to remove their parenting. So I'm going to press Alt P and clear parent. And that will disconnect all of these bones from each other and from everything else. So here is how we can make them move with the bendy bone. I'm going to go to pose mode, select the first bone of these bones that we subdivided, go to constraints, give it an armature constraint, press the add target bone button on the bones, set the target armature to armature, which is the armature that I'm editing right now. And the bone that I want is the original bendy bone that I created. Now, if I move my um, control, you'll see that this bone is already kind of deforming or moving with the bendy bone. So let's just select all of these uh, segmented bones. And then finally shift select the one with that we just um, added a constraint to, and then go to pose, constraints, copy constraints. Now, if I try to move the controls, you'll see that all of these new bones kind of move with uh, the bendy bones. So this is the basic setup. Now, if we switch to octahedral, 
This is my bendy bone. I can press H to hide it. And now if I just move the controls, you will see the actual subdivided bones moving and deforming with it. And as you can see, the deformation is not absolutely perfect, but this will work quite well. But there are things that you can do to improve this. For example, I can select this end um, control bone, shift select the closest subdivided bone and press control shift C and choose dump track. And that will kind of point this um, bone to the end control bone. And I can keep doing this. Select the first subdivided bone, then the one next to it. Control shift C, dump track. And that may give you a behavior that is more to your liking. It's entirely up to you. Uh, something that you may notice is that because this original bendy bone has a stretch to constrain, it is stretching, and thus the other bones that are constrained to it are also stretching. So if you want to prevent this, for example, if you are exporting to a uh, game engine and you don't really want your armature to stretch, then you can add another constraint, limit scale to your bones, and just enable minimum Y and maximum Y and give them a scale of 1. And that will make your bone always stay at the scale of one and never squash or stretch. And then you have to do the same for the other bones. By the way, if you have an add-on, let's see, uh, preferences, add-ons, copy, copy attributes. This add-on comes with Blender, but it is not enabled by default. So just enable it. And then I can select all of these bones. And then this uh, final bone where I added the limit scale. I'll press Ctrl C and choose copy selected constraints, choose the limit scale one, press OK, and this same constraint will be added to all of the other bones. OK, let's switch back to bendy bones and unhide the original bendy bone. And you'll see that now the subdivided bones follow the bendy bone quite well. I can actually select the bendy bone, give it a bone group, make it um, yellow or something and a sign and that will make it easier to distinguish between the bendy bone and the other bones and yeah it works um, and now if I unhide my cylinder again let's unparent it from everything and then I'll go back to the armature pose mode select the original bendy bone make it non-deforming and so now the only the subdivided bones will be deforming. Let's also get rid of these um, vertex groups that I have and parent again with uh, automatic weights. And now this cylinder is actually deformed by the subdivided bones. And if you animate this, then you'll be able to export this animation to a game engine, another app, and so on. And you don't have to worry about the fact that other applications don't really understand bendy bones because we converted bendy bones to normal bones. And one last detail, just in case it wasn't clear. In this example, I had a control bendy bone with six segments, and then I created six actual bones that conform to this bendy bone. But that was kind of arbitrary. There is uh, no correlation between the number of bendy bone segments and the number of subdivided bones. So for example, I can go to my bendy bone and on the bendy bone, give it more segments, as many as I want or as few as I want. And the setup will still behave correctly. In fact, giving it more segments usually makes it look a little bit better. If I set uh, segments to as low as a one, which basically means means no bendy bones, then I get something that is, uh, well, something that doesn't really deform and doesn't have any curvature. But if I start adding segments, then right away we start to see the effect of this control bone, of this control bendy bone. And in the same way, I can go to edit mode, select all of my subdivided bones, and subdivide them again. And now I'll have even more subdivided bone that will follow this um, bendy bone. 
these new bones that I subdivided are not really yet um, set up with all the constraints that I need. If I go to pose mode, you'll see that these new bones are not green, which means that they don't have the constraints. So what I need to do is select them, go to edit mode, Alt P and clear the apparent because when I subdivided them, they became they became child bones of the bone from which they were subdivided from. So clear parent and then again in pose mode. Now they, they don't really move with the armature, but if I have all of them selected, select one of the bones that are already set up and then I'll do again control C copy selected constraints and I'll choose the armature and limit scale constraint. Okay, and the dump track I cannot uh, really copy because it needs to be set up uh, manually. Okay, and now we have this uh, set up with more bones. So to wrap things up, here's a practical example. This is a character rigged with Rigify, and as you may know, the deformation bones, which are on layer 29, the deformation bones in Rigify often have bendy bones, and the spine bones in particular are made of bendy bones. So let's go to pose mode, viewport display, set to B bone, and you'll see the bendy bones here. And now if I wanted to convert this to regular bones, I could select all of these spine bones, go to edit mode, shift T, and duplicate these bones, and then control Alt and S to make them thicker to be able to distinguish them. Now, if I go back to pose mode, you'll see that these bones inherited some uh, constraints. I want to get rid of them quickly. Control Alt and C, and that will remove any constraints that we have. Then go to the bone tab, bendy bones, set the segments to one for the active bone, and then right click and copy to select it. And now all of these copy bones have no bendy bones. Let's go back to edit mode and actually subdivide these bones. So right click, subdivide. And let's give them two cuts, which means three bones per original bendy bone. And at this stage, I'll also disconnect all bones. Alt P, clear parent. And now I can start setting up the actual armature modifiers to bind these new bones to the bendy bones. So it will be done exactly the same way as before. Go to pose mode, select the first bone at the first uh, spine bone. So this first spine bone is called DEF spine. So select the first bone, Armature constraints, add an armature constraint, add target bone, rig, and we want the DEF spine. And then select the other two bones in this area. Shift select the first bone, pose, constraint, copy constraint. And I'll do exactly the same uh, thing for the other bones, except that I'll change the target bone to the next spine bone. So in this case, that's spine 001, and then Spine 002 and spine 003. And once the constraints are set up, I can enable my torso controls and these new bones will move with the bendy bones. So now I can select these bones, the copy bones, hide them for a second, and I'm going to select my original spine bones and remove their deform modifier. Again, disable for the active one, right click, copy to select it, and now all of them are disabled. Deform is off. Alt H to unhide these uh, new bones. And now if I go to object mode, select the character, then the rig, control P and parent with automatic weights. Now this character will, will actually be deformed by these new bones that we created. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying that you should do this necessarily. I'm just saying that if you wanted to, you could. And that's it. I've wanted to share this technique for a while now, and I'm happy that I finally found the time to do so. I hope you liked it. I hope it will be useful to you. If it is, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe with notifications, and I don't know, become a patron maybe. Um, big thanks to the people who are already supporting me. Please tune in again next time. Bye-bye.